Hello everyone, this is Ashish and today we are going to continue our tremendous discussion on rocket science and rocketry. In the last one, we have already talked about solid rocket motors and over there I promised in the next one we are going to talk about liquid engines. There we have talked about where solid motors has to be used or what are their advantages. Also we have talked about what are its limitations and those limitations my friends are going to be filled by liquid engines. Today we are going to discuss a little bit more complicated boosters, a little bit more complicated system of propulsion, the liquid engines. There are various forms of liquid engines also. For example, earth storable, cryogenics, semi-cryo. But we are going to understand the basic mechanism of how these engines work. You are going to understand very quickly that this is a little bit more complicated looking at the pure engineering that is applied over here. But I promise you that it is going to be made as simple as possible and you'll be able to understand no matter what level of education you're having. My name is Ashish Ranjan. I have been a scientist in Indian Space Research Organization and this is a video on liquid engines. All right, the principle of propulsion is very simple. For propulsion, you need combustion. The combustion of propellant will produce hot gas. That hot gas has to be thrown out with a very high velocity. Because of conservation of linear momentum, you are going to get a thrust to the vehicle or launch vehicle in a linear direction. So let us say we are having something like M1 is our launch vehicle is carrying mass two of propellant right and after combustion i need another marker after combustion this mass is going to be thrown out with a velocity of v2 and it will gain some velocity v1 ultimately v1 m1 will be equal to v2 m2 very simple as simple as it gets but for this combustion we are not going to need a combustion chamber so i'm going to make it simple for you guys this is my combustion chamber what is happening over here as simple as it gets combustion for combustion what do we need we need oxygen oxidizer and we need fuel all right this fuel combines and maybe it burns as fast as it combines or you need some external source like an igniter but the fuel with just uh, fuel with just burns in and when it gets in touch with the oxidizer it is called hypergolic propellant right so as soon as they combine they burn and there are a few engines that will work like this but there are other engines that will need a kind of external heat source and then again there are a lot of forms of liquid engines there are earth storable liquid engines there are cryogenic engines there are semi cryo engines but today we are going to study the basic concepts of how it works so i've given the oxidizer i've given the fuel and let us say whatever happens that it requires there's a combustion over here okay all right, I open a little bit of hole over here and I let this combustion go out. It is going to go out, it's perfectly fine. But what if I can increase the velocity as it goes out because the mass has to be lesser if I increase the velocity to get the same linear momentum in the upward direction as we, as we know that the launch vehicle mass is going to be pretty high and the velocity required to leave uh, the Earth's surface or to reach any orbit or to reach any other celestial body is also going to be very high. So definitely this mass has to be very very high. I'll try my best to increase the velocity over here. Okay, we know that by conservation of mass if we decrease the area of cross section, the velocity is going to keep on increasing. Yes or no? So the same mass has to travel through lesser cross section area. So it has to travel faster. If that does not happen, where is that mass going to go? It cannot accumulate over here. This is going to burst if that happens, right? So that is what we call conservation of mass. And that is going to cause the increase of velocity. But that happens, that means the decrease of cross section area will cause increase of velocity only for subsonic flow. And at some point, your flow is going to go supersonic. And beyond that, to increase the velocity, you need diverging section. You have to study a little bit of gas dynamics to understand that, but take my word for it. If you have diverging section in supersonic flow, that is Mach number greater than equal to zero, then you will need a diverging section to increase the velocity and in rocket engines we definitely go supersonic when it comes to throwing out these propellants because the rocket itself is flying at supersonic velocity after some altitude so definitely this is obviously traveling at supersonic velocity so this is what we call a nozzle 
and we are having the converging section much shorter than the diverging section because of the reasons like flow separation maybe we are going to discuss something like that later so we have two components of a liquid engine so far what are they this is a combustion chamber we are going to say cc this is a nozzle right we are going to say NOZ. So we are having two very essential components. So we have actually produced the burn and also we have produced the increase in velocity. This might be sufficient for you to have propulsion. Are we having a sufficient velocity at which the propellant is being thrown out? Yes. Are we having the mixing of fuel and oxidizer? Yes. Yeah, this might be a sufficient engine, but we want to increase its velocity at which it goes out. What if, what if, I increase the velocity at which I'm giving oxidizer. I increase the velocity at which I'm giving fuel. Won't that be better because this fuel and oxidizer it is mixing faster. This combustion is happening at a higher rate. We are already increasing the velocity. The thrust that we are going to get is definitely going to increase. So the next objective is to increase the flow rate of these two. That can be done by increasing the pressure at which it is fed. And mind you guys, if you want to pressurize the flow, we already know that combustion is taking place over here. This is already going to produce very high pressure and it can go above 50 bar, 50 times the pressure on top of your head. So you understand that the pressure at which it is being fed has to be higher than that, obviously. Flow happens because of pressure difference. So if the pressure over here is lower, the flow will happen in this direction. So the pumps, yes, we are going to use pumps pumps are probably the only way to increase pressure right there might be different forms of pumps but if you have to increase the pressure of fluid you are going to need pumps so i'm going to assemble pumps over here let us simplify the design we already know what these are we already know combustion is going to take place again simplifying our thing so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a pump over here pump is going to look something like this and over here also they're going to be Pump. Pumping the fuel, pumping the oxidizer, throwing all, both of them at a very high pressure so that combustion happens more rapidly. Alright, so these pumps are essential but who the hell are going to run this pump? Because these pumps are going to be centrifugal. So by centrifugal action you can definitely increase the pressure. The reciprocating pumps also it's not going to work over here um, because reciprocating pumps are at a lot of cases very dangerous also. Your heart is a kind of reciprocating pump map positive displacement pump kind of we can say that is a topic for another day a lot of interesting things to discuss over here but just take my words there's going to be reciprocating pump that means there will be actually kind of a wheel that is going to be churning the fluid increasing its pressure as it moves through a section okay good we have to rotate this what are we going to do hmm some driver can we add motor but motor running from some electric power will not be as good because you have to carry a big battery and you know the battery that is in your car is also very heavy mass is the enemy of propulsion we cannot carry a large amount of mass so what we do is that we have a mechanical rotating device we call it prime mover so anything that is a source of power would be called prime mover over here it is turbine yeah so this is a let us say a turbine okay turbine pump and then there is a shaft going maybe different shaft maybe same shaft maybe different velocity of this and this maybe same velocity of both the pumps does not matter over here what we understand that we are able to produce rotation because of turbine and that rotation is going to rotate the pumps that is going to increase the pressure of fuel and oxidizer that is going to give us more rapid combustion isn't it now next how are we going to run the turbine because turbine is not going to run on itself we need some power to run that turbine too can we use this combustion hmm that is a good possibility because if we take a channel out of this and through the hot gas that is what turbines work on turbines work on hot gases those hot gases passes through the blades of the turbine and rotates the blades okay so for for absolute beginners just understand that there's going to be blades in a turbine much more than just four that i've shown over here but these blades when you throw hot gas gas sorry hot gas on it it is going to rotate if it has a pivoting point all right because of this the whole thing is going to rotate the shaft coming out will be connected to a pump and pump will be rotated because of the rotation of the pump increase in 
pressure. This has to be rotated. For that, we need hot gas. Can we take a line out? Yes, we can. But it is better if we have another combustion device. Now, this is another small combustion device that is going to produce hot gas. And it is also going to have a feed line of both fuel and oxidizer. Same combustion is going on over here but probably at a much lower pressure, probably producing much lesser quantity of gas, but it is only for the turbine. By the way, this pump and turbine combination, two pumps and one turbine combination, sometimes there are more pumps too, but those are things that we are going to discuss later if there's some other fluid involved, okay? This is called a turbo pump, okay? This is called a gas generator or a pre-igniter, depending on various kinds of combustion cycle. All right. so. All you have to understand right now that there is a combustion chamber, there's a nozzle which is going to increase the velocity, there's a turbine which is going to increase the flow rate of the fuel and the oxidizer entering which is going to run the pumps and this turbine has to be run by another combustion. So how many combustions are going on right now? Two. One, two. Is this the only way to increase the pressure of the fuel? Uh, and the oxidizer? No. There are other forms also. Generally for larger engines, for larger thrust producing engines, we use turbo pump system. There are other pressure fed engines also for smaller engines. And that the situation is very simple. You will be having a pressurized gas, very high pressure, 200, 300 bar pressure that is just going to pressurize the fuel and the oxidizer. It is a much simpler system, but it is not efficient when the size of the engine is large, when the thrust of the engine is large right so basically basically we have our engine pretty simple huh so what we are having right now we are having a nozzle one second we are having a nozzle we are having a combustion chamber we are having a pump system the pump has to be run by turbine the turbine has to be run by gas generator or pre-igniter something like that pre-combustion is happening over there and basically this is run by again a closed loop system so there will be a closed loop that after pumping this will be going that some of the and uh, fluid fuel and propellant fuel and oxidizer will be bled over here and thus the pressure will increase slowly and slowly okay initially the pressure will ramp up and then there will be a stable region and that is again another thing when do you want to stop the pressure because this is going to be designed for some pressure only all right let us say 80 bar 80 bar pressure it is designed for so you have to have a feedback mechanism that when you have already reached 80 bar the supply of fuel should decrease or should become stable at the pressure that it is designed for okay so for that the other pressure regulating measurement uh, system sorry pressure regulating system which is going to take feedback from the combustion chamber okay this is the pressure now we we should either decrease the supply of fuel because everything can be controlled by the fuel and oxidizer supply or not yes if the pressure becomes too high then we are going to decrease the pump velocity if we decrease the pump velocity the supply of the fuel and the oxidizer decreases and if the pressure over here developed is not sufficient then the thrust will not be sufficient then the feedback will go to some system which is going to say that i need more fuel i need more oxidizer so that i can produce more combustion so this velocity will increase all those feedback mechanisms are also over there also any combustion is a reaction right and any reaction should have a perfect mixture ratio okay so the fuel and oxidizer is not always in same mixture sometimes we use oxidizer rich mixture sometimes we use fuel rich mixture but that mixture ratio is that for that only an engine is designed and that has to be maintained also and all those things a moderator and an engine there are a lot of components but this is the basic way how your engine generates power others are just the details and don't you worry my friends i'm going to explain the details also but this is going to give you a basic idea you can already understand it is already much more complicated than a solid rocket motor right and it is just uh, we can call a silhouette of an engine a liquid engine there are a lot of components also there's a fuel tank obviously on top of it and to be honest if this is the engine this is going to be the stage engine is going to be very small part of a stage and it is going to con contain the oxidizer and the fuel fuel tanks and obviously other uh, other control mechanism there's basically going to be a computer over there 
processor will be there which is going to continuously monitor because once a launch vehicle lifts off generally we do not have control it completely goes into its pre-programmed manner and it follows the trajectory that it is designed for it is a complicated device my friends and that is why we call it rocket science but it starts with very simple combustion increase the velocity to increase the rate of combustion we add pumps to run the pumps we add turbine to run the turbine we add a gas generator or pre-igniter and that has to be having a close loop with this only so uh, slowly and slowly we'll be ramping up the pressure of the combustion chamber were you able to understand if you have any doubts put it in the comment section i was almost going to say combustion chamber <laughs> okay so i'm happy to explain this by the way when i was working in isro i was also working in liquid engines only so this was like my almost monthly routine every now and then a new scientist or an engineer will be joining and i'll be going through and just see this is how it works it starts with combustion you have to produce combustion then you have to increase the velocity you have to increase the rate of combustion you have to add a pump or two pump if fuel and oxidizer are having the separate pumps and then you will be having a turbine to run the pump and then you'll be having some igniter that is going to have a secondary combustion to run the turbine all right i hope that i was able to explain it to you also this works for most of the engines that we see spacex is having completely liquid engines so all the 27 engines that you see on the lower stage those are all what are they they are liquid engines only but they are semi cryo engines they are a little bit advanced than both earth storable and cryogenic engines the semi cryo why are they not using solid boosters that's a very good question i hope that some of you guys can answer in the comment section and i'll be replying to each and every one of you and in the next one we'll discuss why does spacex not use does not use solid rocket motors and all the stages are liquid engines i think that after studying about solid rocket motors in the last one and liquid engines in this one you'll be able to answer that if not i'll be answering that in the subsequent videos that i'm going to be making if you miss solid rocket motors the link will be always available down in the description box go and check it out it's worth your time and i'll see all of you in the next one till then bye you find me on instagram and i'll be live weekly over there you can join me live also and other important links will be down in the description box and i'll see all of you in the next one till then bye